for one monument in Petra. We call it the treasury. This facade behind me, we call it the treasury. Who named it the treasury? The Bedouin who've been here, they have this believing that there is a treasure behind the facade. So they start shooting bullets. Even you can see the influence of these bullets down here and up on the statue in the middle. So from here, they create the name to be, this is the treasury. But basically, nobody know what is the name of this monument. We call it the treasury. In Arabic, we call it Al-Kazna, but nobody really know what's exactly the name because it's not mentioned in any record. But all what we know from the records that the designer and the one who ordered for this to be carved was one of the Nabataean kings, his name Aretus IV. Aretus is Arabic name. We said Al Harith Al Rabe. He's the king of the Nabataeans in their golden time. In their golden time. I was trying to mention Aretus when he was, I said he make a deal because he was very smart and very wisdom king. Uh, Aretus IV. He's the designer and he ordered for this to be carved carved from up to down and when you look at the details and the goddess which is carved on this uh, facade you see mixed of goddess look at this beautiful story from the top where the corner you see a bird sitting this is eagle and this is a god of the Assyrians Assyrians is another nation during the Nabataean. So the eagle, now we have, yesterday we talked about the icon, iconolism war. Iconolism war meaning that we should destroy these icons by cutting the head of the statue, any statue, if it's animal, bird, or human, or human. So you see the bird, but you can't see the head of the bird. Now, you see the frieze where the corner, and you can see also like a wings, there's like a wings from the top uh, part, the upper part, and there is a wing down here. There is two wings. You see the wings where the pediments. So this is all have meaning. But the most beautiful meaning, when you see, unfortunately, how much they shot on Isis. She's the Egyptian god. She's standing in the middle, wearing this beautiful dress, and uh, inside the niches you see two women this is the amazonite so it's a greek mythology with the assyrians and also uh with the egyptians so they mix it we talk about they want to make a familiarity to everyone visit here uh from these traders to keep on the familiarity and the peace so aritos he was very smart to be ordered for this to be carved all in one story and then we see the victory god is also. It's the victory god. You see, one and one there. And it's a very much the same. So you ask yourself, how come they carve it, those carvers, you know, in a very equal way, and there is no mistake. A, a little mistake will damage the whole thing. You will say like, okay, they mistake here. This is not looks like it. So the, one, the, the thing which is really, uh, oh, this was a break. Okay, they, they hold it. So Sorry. the thing which is really uh, make you wonder that how they carve this in, the, in this details, but it's the same size, you know, when you see the statue, when you see the columns. By the way, there is a column on the top there, and look at the capital also. We call it the Corinthian. It's Nabataean Corinthian uh, columns. And uh, down, you see where the pediment with the frieze and the corpse. There's like a corpse, you see the corpse and the pediment and you see the frieze and you see like a crown up the pediment. This is also, it's a crown, so it's have a meaning and down you see again the frieze and you see the corpse and you see the cups, looks like a cups of wine, looks like a cups of wine, looks like the holy grails. So why they have the cups the cups uh they said if, if, if i'm rich 
I have my fancy palace. I have my golden spoon and fork and I have a gift so I will be show off. So they're like trying to show off that we are the richest nation when you see the Holy Grails, when you see this wine cups right there. Now, you eyes looking at the lower uh, columns. So there is uh, actually two, four, six columns. And it's trick, the columns is trick you eyes because your brain with your eyes will be think that the lower columns holding the upper part but this lower columns it's not holding the upper part because everything is carved it's carved so this is a cliff so they carved the cliff and they created they lift this one and it's trick your eyes it looks like it's holding the upper part how much they are you know really genius designer and carver back in that time and the wondering question is who are they? Who are they, those people? Inside you always think, I wish I can know who's this art man who's, and how, man, how much time it was taking, and how they been do it in a very equality. When you look at the frieze, when you look at the corpse, when you look at the Corinthian column, you know, down and up. There is a room here, and it's not access to any place, maybe. When I was a very little kid, they'd been doing the school trip and it was allowed to go inside. It's not access to any place. And then they don't allow it, saying that, excuse that, you know, uh, people are scratching and damaging, so it's not allowed no more, but it's for eight square meters. Look at the wings. And here you see two men riding two horses. This is Castro and Pollux. They got Castro to the left, Pollux to the right, and they're the sons of Zeus. Again, it's a Greek mythology. It's a Greek mythology. When I said the Greek mythology, it's made by the Nabataean, but it's a mixed story between Egyptian, Assyrians, Greek, and many civilization. If I go to... If, exactly. If I go to Australia, if I go to Australia, huh? Oh, very far away, Australia. So I, I am... I'm like walking in the street and then I see the treasury picture. If I see Jordan flag, I would feel familiar. You know? Yes, of course. Oh. So they're yeah, very smart. They want to make familiarity. Look at the philosophy of what they want. So this is a part, this is a lower part. There is like a footsteps in both sides. These footsteps, if you can count them, there will be 365 footsteps, like the year. There is a 12 columns, looks like the 12 months of the year. Maybe like also they mean something like a calendar. Mm -hmm. The sun rising on the on the treasury, on this facade. The sun rising, so that's mean it's facing to the east. Look at my hand. Here's the treasury facade. It's facing to the east, and this is the wind direction. Uh, yes. So it's facing to the east. The other beautiful monument is the uh, monastery. It's facing to the west of the top. It's facing like this, it's facing to the west. And this, there the wind direction goes to the west. So that's why it doesn't at all affect by the erosion on this facade. When you look at it, it still looks like brand new, like they covered yesterday. Very much brand new. Anyway, the footsteps in both sides, we believe that it was for like a skeleton to stand on this and then start car from up to down. So everything they're doing here and they carve it from up to down using this. Now, before uh, uh, almost like less than 20 years, they were a science from the town. He's a science, archaeological science from Al Farajat family. And he was, his name is Suleiman Farajat. So he was wondering, how about if I take permission and I dig, I dig under, I dig on this level, I dig the ground what is maybe you know there is something maybe so he did dig and he found the steps he found the stairs goes down to another level under under the ground there's another level so there's two beautiful rooms under the ground so that's why i always say wherever they excavate there is more to see if they want to dig the ground to see what is underneath from all these you know uh, monuments and treasures it's still, what's been discovered is that, uh, you know, they go like with a 22%. 22%, that's meaning uh, around 78% uh, is still underneath. If you dig, you will find. 
for some reason they don't want to. I mean, this is what they call like this is where archaeological part of the of the of the spectrum, right? There's two rooms, also for some purpose. During which king I say it? Aritus. Aritus the fourth. Aritus the fourth. He's a very wisdom king. Can I can I tell you? Uh, well, I will tell you a story about Aritus, okay? You yes. will enjoy the story. Of but it's not confirmed story. So I will be link it also to Herodus. You know Herodus? Herod. Herod. Herodus mm -hmm. the second. Uh, Herod, he have a castle uh, in an area which is called by Macarius. It's one of the Christian pilgrimage. And in that area, Macarius, John the Baptist, he was headed there because of Salome story, which is in the... Yes, he was headed in Macarius. It's in the north from where we are, northwest from where we are, okay? Where it's it's not far away from the Dead Sea. Yeah. They call it uh, Herodos uh, Castle. Herodos Castle. Now, before that, let me just sh show you something else. That there were the earthquake, you know, dropped down one of the columns here. See the column here? This was down back to the earliest of 19th century and then they put it up again. You can see the bricks and the blaster. So this is proof that the lower columns is not holding or carrying out the, the upper uh, part. Well, you know, I'm just making, making this a story. I mean, it's not really for believing this story, but sometimes when you read a lots of details, you can connect things. Uh, they said uh, uh, Aretus IV, he have a beautiful princess daughter, and she's named Masada, Masada. So when they make the deal, as I believe, you know, with the Romans to keep it safe, <laughs> to make a deal back in that time, they let sometimes the kings marry. So that's make like unite and peace to make more peace. So uh, Herods, he did marry to Masada, and he took Masada to that palace, which is in that place where uh, Macarius. Uh, from the other side, the area now, they call it Masada. There is Dead Sea, right? From the other side, they call the area Masada. Originally, the name is Masada. I'm just trying to link this. She's the daughter. According to the story of Herod, when he fell in love with his uh, sister-in-law, right? The wife of his brother, of course, John the Baptist, he said, this is uh, taboo and you should not even feel the love for your sister-in-law. So he was against this and that's what makes uh, 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 the woman uh, hate uh, uh, John, who was the pop, you know, the, the wisdom man. And uh, when Salome danced to him, he said, ask me, he was drunk. He said, ask me for anything you want. Even if you ask me for the half of my property and authority, I will give it to you. She went to her mother and she said to her, tell him, I want the head of John being cut in Macarius, which is in Jordan, one of the Christian pilgrimage places. And this story is mentioned in the Bible. And that's what's unfortunately happened. That John the Baptist, he was headed. Now Masada, when she hear the news of her husband of what he's like falling in love so she felt so sad and she returned back to here so the name is still masada but masada they said she's the daughter of this king aritos it's, it's nice story it's good to know you know but it's not really confirmed you know according to what you see in in, in the physical now there a lot ask themselves about how they make this carving, the treasury, how they make it. It's all puzzles of rock and cracky. So maybe they make it flat first, flat. So flat from up to down. And then they need to make it like a hole or a gap mm. in the wall. So they make uh, a holes. They put wood in these holes. They spill the water on this wood so this is expanded expanded the rocks so there is tons of rocks will be dropped down so you have the cap already and then you have the splits to be carved again from up to down again whatever i'm saying you ask yourself how they make it in this equality nobody know it's carving it's used the uh, metal tools of carving all this from all the excavation we haven't found this much metal tools because they need a lots of 
metal tools to make all the details of all these stone. This is still survived because we talk about it's like in the east, so the sunrise, if it's get dry, always the, it will be get dry because of the sun. And this is where the wind direction and they design it in a way to avoid the water to came on this you know facade and da damage it by like the other you know like the other monuments which has got very damaged because of the erosion because of the wind and the and the water so this is one and number two monastery when you go to see the monastery they will it's, it's amazing and attractive your your eye to keep looking at it but there is no statues story like those they have a believing this was the center of petra or this was like the royalty oval plaza back to that king aritos the fourth and they have imagination that this was like rooms for the kings to meet and to make the big deal of the business that makes sense but it's not record so until now and for the coming future you will ask yourself if you remember what i'm telling you that how they carved this really nobody knows nobody knows but i know and what was in there